I know you're not following what I'm saying anyway, right? That's that's okay. That doesn't matter. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 actors who got Oscars for the wrong role. What do you love so much? Your Majesty. Speak up, girl. I know who I am. To protect the sheep, you got to catch the wolf. And it takes a wolf to catch a wolf. You understand? Where are your shoes? They're not my feet. Get big holes in your socks. Oh, they're not that big. For this list, we're looking at those actors who took home Academy Awards for the wrong films. Which actor should have won an Oscar but never did? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Whoopi Goldberg – Ghost Ghost did well at the Academy Awards, with Whoopi Goldberg earning her sole Oscar for the role of Oda Mae Brown. Consuelo? Lucita? Julieta? Josefina, Linda, Maria, Sissy, it's Mama. She is Maria. Yes! Praise God, I knew he was with his mama. As the fraudulent psychic who suddenly experiences the real thing, Goldberg is perhaps the best part of the entire movie. Just think of it this way. You'll go to heaven. I wanna go to heaven. I wanna go to the bank and cast a goddamn check. While Oda is a memorable character, Goldberg should have already bagged an Oscar for her performance in 1985's The Color Purple. Goldberg delivers a powerful and multi-layered performance as Seely, a woman who perseveres through hell. Did I ever ask you for anything? I Did I ever ask you for anything? I never asked you for nothing, not even your sorry ass hand in marriage. The Color Purple was only Goldberg's second feature film, and Seely was by far her biggest movie role at the time. Number nine, James Cagney, Yankee Doodle Dandy. Some actors leave such an impact on a genre, they become synonymous with it. When it comes to gangster and, to a lesser extent, noir flicks, few names hold as much weight as James Cagney. Stick him up. Stick him up. An intense and unforgettable turn in The Public Enemy cemented Cagney as the ultimate gangster, a reputation the actor would try to escape for the majority of his career. In his most successful attempt to go against type, Cagney earned an Oscar for the musical biopic Yankee Doodle Dandy. As good as that performance was, it's a crime that Cagney never earned an Oscar for the roles that shaped his legacy, particularly White Heat and Angels with Dirty Faces. Number 8. Jack Nicholson – As Good As It Gets over a career spanning decades and dozens of fantastic roles, Jack Nicholson won two Best Actor Oscars, the first for One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest and the last for As Good As It Gets. Listen, I really think you have a chance here. I mean, the best thing you have going for you is your willingness to humiliate yourself. Nicholson is naturally great in the 1997 romantic comedy, but As Good As It Gets is ultimately just a footnote in the actor's storied career. You make me want to be a better man. When it comes to performances, Nicholson should have probably nabbed a few more Oscars during the early 70s. Five Easy Pieces, The Last Detail, and Chinatown represent Nicholson at his absolute best. Forget it, Jake. It's Chinatown. Number 7. Jack Palance, City Slickers One of Hollywood's greatest supporting players, Jack Palance had been setting the standard for scene-stealing bad guys for nearly half a century before he finally won an Oscar for City Slickers. Cowboy leads a different kind of life. And there were cowboys. They're a dying breed. Still means something to me, though. Palance is a joy as the tough as nails curly, but City Slickers came at the tail end of a career filled with more complex and significant roles. You're a low down line Yankee. Prove it. No, Tori. In the 50s and 60s, Palance consistently delivered great performances, and even earned Academy Award nominations for Shane and Sudden Fear. Once you've lost your heart to the theater, it's hard to get it back. Palance certainly deserved to win an Oscar at some point, but his best work happened long before City Slickers. Number 6. Morgan Freeman – Million Dollar Baby Surprisingly, Morgan Freeman has only won a single Academy Award – Best Supporting Actor Oscar for Million Dollar Baby. As a former boxer turned gym hand, Freeman brought heart, gravitas, humor, and narration to the role of Eddie. People die every day, Frankie. 
mopping floors, washing dishes. And you know what that last thought is? I never got my shot. Because of you, Maggie got her shot. Freeman's filmography is not exactly lacking in excellent entries, but the actor's turn as Red in The Shawshank Redemption manages to stand out even amidst a sea of great roles. Rehabilitated? It's just a bullshit word. So you go on and stamp your form, Sonny, and stop wasting my time. That year, Freeman lost out to Tom Hanks's Forrest Gump at the Oscars, a decision that is still one of the Academy's most polarizing. Oscars for Unforgiven and Seven wouldn't have hurt either. Hell, I sympathize. I, I sympathize completely. Number five, Denzel Washington, Training Day. After winning a Best Supporting Actor Oscar for Glory, Denzel Washington finally took home the Best Actor Prize for Training Day's Dirty Cop. So it was a real quiet night. Boom! <laughs> Ah, <laughs> you never know, that's the point. A rare villainous turn for Washington, Detective Harris is an irresistible force of nature, the type of role that elevates a decent movie into a great one. The thing is that by the time Training Day was released, Washington should have already scored a Best Actor win for Malcolm X. You're not an American, you're an African who happens to be an American. You have to understand the difference. We didn't come over on the, the Nita, the Pinta, and the, and, the, and the whatchamacallit. We didn't land on Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock landed on us. An epic performance worthy of such an ambitious biopic, Washington brought the historical figure to life completely, embodying Malcolm X's public and behind-the-scenes persona. Oh, I say it, I say it again, you've been had. You've been took. You've been hoodwinked. Bamboozled. Let us stray. Run them up. Number four, Judy Dench, Shakespeare in Love. Although Shakespeare in Love left the 71st Academy Awards with three Oscars, including a Best Supporting Actress win for Judy Dench, these victories were muddied by the aggressive marketing campaign that preceded the ceremony. I bear witness to the wager and will be the judge of it as occasion arises. While charming as Queen Elizabeth I in Shakespeare in Love, Dench has had plenty of weightier roles throughout her career, some of which she earned Oscar nominations for. But I know something of a woman in a man's profession. Yes, by God, I do know about that. Mrs. Brown, Philomena, Iris, and Notes on a Scandal all have Dench in fine form, demonstrating the actress's natural capacity for instilling each character with humanity and heart. I signed it because I believed I committed a terrible sin and had to be punished. But what made it so much worse was that I enjoyed it. What? The sex. Number three. Leonardo DiCaprio, The Revenant. For the longest time, Leonardo DiCaprio was that A-list star that just couldn't win an Oscar. Four nominations came and went before the Academy finally decided to break the streak, handing DiCaprio a Best Actor win for The Revenant. I'm working on it. You can work on it later when I'm done talking to you. Look at me, Scout. That's enough! You're forgetting your place, boy. As far as I can tell, my place is right here on the smart end of this rifle. Although DiCaprio produced an impressively physical performance for the grueling Western film, the actor should probably have won an Oscar for his career-making turn in What's Eating Gilbert Grape, a challenging role that could have been unbearable in less capable hands. Hey, 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 uh, do the siren, do the siren, okay? Do the siren, all right? The Wolf of Wall Street also brought out the best in DiCaprio in the most entertaining way. By the time you read about it in the Wall Street Journal, it's already too late. Number two, Elizabeth Taylor, Butterfield 8. A Hollywood legend, Elizabeth Taylor lit up the screen as few actors have ever been able to. Have you ever stopped to think that perhaps you bring out the wildness in me? With you, who has time to think? Nobody's likely to claim that Taylor didn't deserve an Oscar for Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, but the actress herself was less impressed with her other Academy Award-winning film, Butterfield 8. He left me money. He actually left me money! But what would you have done? Taylor's hatred for Butterfield 8 aside, the actress turned in a powerful performance as Gloria, even if the 1960 film is not quite an essential entry in her filmography. Peak Taylor can be found in Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, A Place in the Sun, Giant, and Suddenly Last Summer. Don't you think I know that? Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Alicia Vikander, The Danish Girl, 
because Vikander reached near perfection in Ex Machina. So we need to break the ice. Do you know what I mean by that? Yes. What do I mean? Overcome initial social awkwardness. Jack Lemmon saved the tiger because a comedy legend had to star in a drama to win a Best Actor Oscar. Dirty old man! What happened? I just got pinched in the elevator! Well, now you know how the other half lives. Look at that! I'm not even pretty! Jessica Lange, Tootsie, because Francis also came out in 1982. How are you doing, Farmer? I'm doing just fine, Mary. Paul Newman, The Color of Money, because The Hustler, Cool Hand Luke, and The Verdict exist. Look at the way he moves like a dancer. Well, cross-eyed. And those fingers, them chubby fingers. That stroke. He's like he's, uh, like he's playing a violin or something. Ball. Jeff Bridges, Crazy Heart, because Bridges starred in two great Coen Brothers movies and got no Oscars for them. I am not Mr. Lebowski. You're Mr. Lebowski. I'm the dude. So that's what you call me, you know? Uh, that or uh, his dudeness or uh, duder or, uh, you know, El Duderino if you're not into the whole brevity thing. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Al Pacino, Scent of a Woman. After literally decades of close calls, Al Pacino finally won an Oscar in the early 90s. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Giving the type of over-the-top performance that would come to define his late career, Al Pacino is a lot of fun in Scent of a Woman, but the Oscar win did feel like a Lifetime Achievement Award. And that, my friends, is called integrity. That's called courage. Now that's the stuff leaders should be made of. Pacino's filmography speaks for itself, as does the fact that the actor was nominated four consecutive times in the 70s. Pacino didn't manage to win an Oscar for The Godfather movies, Serpico, or Dog Day Afternoon, which is the type of fact that just feels wrong. Too much. This is too much. This is too much. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.